What's up guys, I am the budding watch enthusiast here on the Watch With Us channel. So in this video, I guess we're gonna be talking about the one versus the many and why I don't necessarily subscribe to the theory of prioritizing, you know, the one amazing watch over the many, maybe not so as, as amazing watches. Now let's, let's first argue in favor, I guess, of the one watch and let's just take the Rolex Submariner uh, as an example that we can use here. The Sub is, of course, an iconic dive watch that stood the test of time. The Submariner's a watch that's always going to be around. It's always going to be in style. There's several different variations that it comes in. Uh, you know it's going to come with that robust uh, Rolex movement that can last you a lifetime. You know, thanks to James Bond, it's a watch that now you can wear <laughs> with, with a suit as well as to the beach, no problem. And again, it's a fantastic watch that is worth every penny. Uh, that it costs. But at the same time, a Rolex Submariner costs near $10,000. And for some people, that's just not an affordable watch. And some people might not want to spend that much on one watch. And that's a fair argument to make, right? Because why would you spend $10,000 on one watch when you can get five pretty good watches, like really darn good watches for two grand a piece, right? Like, like to me, in my perspective, the type of collector that I am, that's the much better way to go. And there's also a couple more reasons why I think the many watch, you know, theory is better than the one watch theory. One of the reasons for me is that when you buy that one watch, when you buy that Rolex or when you buy that Speedmaster, a lot of what you're buying isn't the watch. A lot of what you're buying is Rolex. A lot of what you're buying is Omega. And buying those things comes at a premium, especially when there's companies out there like Christopher Ward, like Oris, like NTH, that are much more selling you the watch and not necessarily selling you the brand, if that makes sense. I guess what I'm trying to say is that a lot of brands are providing a lot more value for money that the gap in quality between that watch and the Rolex isn't necessarily gonna be indicative of, of the price difference between them. Like the price difference is a lot more than the gap in quality is between those two watches. The other big reason for me why I could never do the one watch thing and why the many watch thing works much better for me is because I am much more of the variety is the spice of life guy. I'm definitely the type that like having different choices. I'm definitely the type to like having different styles of watches available to me because what I wanna wear or what I wanna have available to me to pair with different outfits or so, you know, things of that nature uh, is important to me to have choices, to have a, you know, a lot of different options on the table. And most importantly for me, and this is gonna be where my, my stance as a newer collector comes into play, is I think there's a lot of value for me personally in having a lot of different watches from a lot of different brands because that has kind of helped refining what I like. That's kind of helped refining my tastes and, and kind of, you know, helping me flesh out the style of watch that I like the most so that when it does come time, when I do want to make that investment into, you know, that, that higher end watch into that more luxury watch that I'm not throwing my money away, that I'm not making a knee jerk decision, you know, just based on what I think is cool or what is definitely cool. Because for me, it's something that I've honed and it's something that I've really, you know, shaved off the edges and try and really figured out which of those watches is gonna work best for me so that when I make that purchase, I only have to make that purchase one time. It's not a watch that I have to get and then six months later realize, oh, I've made a huge mistake. Now I need to sell this and, and you know, try to find something else. And the reason I brought up the sub at the beginning of the video is because for me as a huge James Bond fan and as someone who, you know, is a fan of those watches, I thought for sure when I first got into watch collecting that a Rolex Submariner was going to be like the ultimate thing to reach for, the ultimate watch that I would hopefully eventually one day attain, and that should be what I'm working towards the entire time. And once I actually got into it a little bit, started learning more about watches and buying more watches and experiencing different brands and styles of watches, I actually figured out that a Rolex Submariner actually really isn't the watch for me. I actually, I mean, I'm not gonna turn down a sub if one comes my way. You know, I just found I just found that very modern, that very, you know, in your face style of sports watch uh, just isn't my jam. And it's really not even my jam with dive watches. I found that my dive watch tastes uh, tend to run a little bit more 
vintage, a little bit more traditional. So that means if I ever had the occasion to maybe pick up a vintage Submariner, a sub from you know the 70s, for example, before the maxi dial uh, came into play, that might be something that's much more on my alley. But the modern subs of today really don't do much to interest me. And that's something that if I hadn't gotten to experience all these different watches, I would have never figured out. I, I might have, you know, just rolled up and bought a sub like a chump and then realized at some point that, oh man, I actually don't really like the subs all that much. So that's why I think that, you know, that idea of, well, you know, it's stupid to buy these other watches and just save up for this one watch is a little bit of a fallacy sometimes. And, and again, that, that also ignores just the point of, you know, some people can't afford to buy the expensive watch. Some people, you know, just, it, it's not practical to spend that amount of money on an expensive watch. So having affordable alternatives and having watches that kind of had that same vibe, that had that same style and aesthetic, I think is a useful exercise. And again, when you first start collecting, I'm not saying recklessly go out and buy every watch that catches your fancy. You know, still do your research and make sure it's something that you still at least have an interest in. But yeah, that's why for me, buying more watches that are more affordable is always gonna be a better course of action than buying, saving up and just buying one watch that's expensive. And look, five years down the road, once I really have my taste refined and I know exactly what I want that's in that more expensive range, that might change. Maybe I'll sell half my collection to, you know, to fund that Explorer, to fund that Grand Seiko. Who knows? I mean, that's that's the other thing too about watch collecting is that your tastes and what you like and your style and, and, and how you collect, you know, you'll change that and, and you'll morph that and you'll tweak that as the months and the years go by. It's something that I found out already just in 18 months. And, and for people that have been collecting for years, I'm sure that you've seen how your collection has shifted from when you first started over what your watch collection looks like today. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comments down below. Uh, if you found it informative or entertaining, do me a favor, hit the like button. Of course, subscribe to watch with us down below. And if you go down to the description, if you've not yet been to my channel, you can find a link to the budding watch enthusiast down there. And I would appreciate it if you would come on by and subscribe while you were there as well. Thank you guys very much for watching this and I will see you all the next time.